Welcome to the studio everyone, Kathy Arbor here and today we're going to be doing a reindeer in acrylic paint. Uh, if you have been following me, you've probably seen the other uh, paint alongs that we've been doing. This was done last week. Um, I believe this one was the week before. And this is actually a members uh, painting that we did. And I think that's it so far. So today we're going to be doing a reindeer. And I had this already painted. So I thought I would put the reindeer on this itself. Hey, Lori, good to see you. A beautiful day, sunny here. Uh, here you guys got a lot of snow. <clears throat> I imagine we'll be getting some soon. So uh, if you look on the description, Below, there should be a link for this traceable and if you want to paint along or you want to wait watch the video and then do it later um, you can do that but it's it's there for you to download it's free and you can use it for whatever you want so this is the reindeer that we're going to be doing um, I'm working on a different uh, camera, so my leg is a little bit iffy. <laughs> so if I don't answer you right away, um, just give me about, I don't know, 15 seconds. That seems to be how much of a leg I've got. I've got a new camera set up, so it's going through a, a cam link, which takes a little bit of extra time. It's icy there. Uh, that's not good. I don't like the ice. I would rather have a whole pile of snow and no ice. <laughs> ice, you, you're looking at power outages and you can't go anywhere. So I'll just wait for a couple minutes for people to start coming in. How's the video look? Snow any day, yeah. And we got a little bit of snow, but not a lot, which is okay with me. Uh, do you not see it in the description box below? There should, I did put it in the uh, description. Video looks good? Great. <clears throat> it's a Google Drive link. Good. Awesome. With this new setup, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm still learning, so I wasn't sure whether it got in there or it's totally new stuff. I'm actually streaming through YouTube stream instead of the webcam, so it's a little bit different. Hi, Nancy. Good to see you. But I like the camera better because I can actually zoom in and, and not worry about it focusing. And I'm just using my, um, it's a Canon uh, Vistia camcorder. 
So you uh, the lighting and everything and the color is so much better than the webcam. Hey, Kimmy. Or Kim, sorry. I have a niece we call Kimmy. <laughs> it's, it's a habit. So if you're if you want to paint along, just uh, go in the description below the video, and there is a link there for you that you can download. Hey, Kathy. Good to see you. So these are the, this is what we did last week. Now you see two of them because normally I paint one ahead. So this is the one I painted ahead and then this is the other one that I did. Hey Eileen. So I normally, to figure out the steps for you guys, so it's a little easier. And then too, I'm also learning as I'm painting this because I've never painted it before. So a lot of times I do um, two. Uh, I've got two of these now. And that was in the memberships for the budding artist and blooming artist. And the download and uh, the supply list and everything is in the community tab on my channel page. So if you want to try this out, you can do that one too. Uh, I haven't done this one yet. I was just in an experiment. <laughs> and these are experiments. Uh, that's for Mary's December 26th stream. This is a membership one and that's one we did a couple weeks ago. And there's downloadables for this one also. And I think there was another one. Oh, the bur the snowman. Yeah, I don't know where I put it. There's another one of a snowman, and it's also a downloadable. So you can go check that out too. So yes, I do more than one because you have to practice. <laughs> so I'm gonna have a lot of folders. <laughs> So what we're going to do today is the, uh, this is what we're going to be doing is the reindeer. So he's got the little jingle bells on him. He's looking behind you. So you can do this on a piece of paper if you want. So you could do it on this background. This is just scrapbook paper and just glue it on to uh, an existing page of mixed media paper or into a book would be fine. Um, a folder, file folder, if you want to have this already for you and you don't have to do the background. I've got a bunch of uh, file folders that I've been playing with. This one is one of them where I was just doing some um, winter scenes using just a few colors. So this is just white, blue, and I think umber I had in this one too. So we're gonna, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna put them on this. So as you can see, I just play. So get your file folder, there's another one. <laughs> so get your file folders out, I can always paint over this if I don't like it. That's the nice thing about file folders is you don't have to worry. Same with books, um, journal books. I know a lot of you even kind of worry about messing up a journal. With acrylic paint, you you just paint over it. Just get your gesso out, paint over if it didn't work out. Or a lot of times I like to leave it and you can see what you did wrong. And that way you learn by it. 
for me, um, I have more fun finding out the hows than the finished product. <laughs> finished product is a bonus I guess but I really enjoy just experimenting and, and finding out how to do things hey Devin good to see you uh, and anybody that's in the lurking welcome to my studio glad to have you here yeah exactly uh lori it helps you see your progress too so you know i like that's what journals are for to learn in it's your little classroom that you can go back in and i make notes in my journals too like This one here is just a sketchbook, but I have all kinds of stuff in here, experimenting, um, drawing. And there's when we were doing the class on drawing. If, um, that's color pencil and pastels. There's another page it's for learning so get your stuff out there's where i was trying to figure out how to draw it all kinds of uh I've, you know it's some place to experiment in So what I would like to do is put this guy on top of here. So I already have my background. Now, I don't know if you guys want a little paint video on how to do a background like this. This is fairly easy. I can also do one video probably next week to show you how to do this one. So let me know in the comments. So I have some carbon paper here and this is what I like to use it's the Sorel transfer paper and it contains no wax or grease and erases like pencil so it won't smear it won't wash out it washes out in fabric if you want it on fabric and it won't um, uh, go into your paint either if you leave it in your paper or canvas so what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to place this guy on here so if you if you're going to paint along you can um, you could actually just paint this and then cut it out and then we could use it next week on the um, tree painting. Oh, wait a minute. Next week is Christmas, is it not? I think it is. So we're just gonna put this guy on here so I want his I didn't put his feet in so I'm just gonna put him down a little bit so he fits let's see I want to get his make sure his butts in so this one I haven't painted before <laughs> so you guys are gonna get the good bad and the ugly <laughs> You'll see how I figure things out. So I like to put a couple pieces just so that 
the paper doesn't move. And then just get a pencil and start drawing over it or a pen, whatever you got. So I'm just going to trace this guy out. And he's going to be pretty well base coated first. So don't get too um, crazy with the inside details because we'll be covering them up anyways with paint first. You can always put them in later when we start to get to that point. So you kind of, uh, I would suggest just, just do an outline of his body. And then we can paint it in. And this is what I do pretty well with everything. Sometimes there's a painting or a, a drawing that I've done that would be too difficult for putting in the background all at once. Sometimes you have to use sections of the background. I'll let you know if I do one of those. Usually they're more complex looking. Um, sometimes a little bit more advanced. Oh, missed a spot there. But yeah, just put This guy in. The bottom you can see the front legs through the back. I was searching on uh, Pinterest for drawings of reindeer per se and the one thing I did notice and this is how I think um, reindeers have a very similar face of a cow they have a very wide um, nose not like a deer a deer has a face that's more triangular where the nose is much smaller and usually black where the reindeer has a very wide nose and it's covered with fur it doesn't have like you know how dogs and cats don't have hair on their nose reindeer have hair on their nose and it's usually white I thought that was interesting <laughs> I just did a whimsical reindeer for my December prompt list. Too bad I... Oh, wow. Did you post it, Devin? I'd love to see it. You love the good, bad, and ugly. <laughs> yeah, you well, you never know what you're going to get here. Then you're going to put the bells in because they will be a different color. So I'm going to draw at least the strap so I know that I don't want to base coat it the same as the body. Okay. Uh, kind of hard to see. I might have to go in and make it darker. That's the only problem with this stuff is that it's it's not really dark and let's see I'm gonna press down a little harder here I might need to cut it out if it's not dark enough Oop. out of ink but 
see if it works better. I got it. I'm just going to leave it on there and just push it back. All right, let's see. So, what you want to do is get a palette ready. And for this one, I'm thinking we'll probably use some raw sienna for the base coat of this. And I want to mix it with a little bit. I don't want it really red, so we're going to mix it with a little bit of um, raw umber and a little bit of tan or white. So you want raw umber, raw sienna. Um, this is just ivory, or you can use buff. Hey, Joan. Hi, Dot. I think we'll put it on YouTube, so I need to edit it. Oh, okay, you actually filmed it. Awesome. Hey, Nana. Okay, so that's the three colors we'll need basically for it. We'll add a little bit of blue for highlights that would be coming off of the sky or make it look a little colder, give it feeling of cold <laughs> and to start off I just want to get this is just a flat number 12 this is craft smart brand chisel reindeer in North America called caribou this is a deer thing Jason. Yeah, I saw I saw the um, them being domesticated, especially in Peru. They actually ride them. The people there. I thought that was kind of cool. Because they have those like almost like a snowshoe hoof. It's very, very big. Okay, so just kind of a mix between the two. You want it kind of a medium. I might add a little bit of brown to that. And I'm just going to outline, hopefully I get everything, and cover up this area where he's going to be. And I'm just using craft paint for this. You can use whatever you have. Um, the artist grade would also be called um, raw umber and raw sienna and buff. So if you want to get those out, that's fine. I just like using craft paint for trying out things instead of using the really good paint. And also I don't like to use it in my file folders because they stick together. Uh, your artist quality has uh, more of a sheen to it so it tends to stick together and I don't like it when it does that because then you end up ripping the paint off of because they stick together they're very hard to unstick so craft paint is great because it doesn't stick and it's cheap 
you're less to worry about messing up something. So this is what I typically do is I start with my base coat. Doesn't matter what I'm doing, it's always a base coat. Trying to find the line, it's very faint. And right there's the. Right. And just if you're doing something on top of the, the scrapbook paper, you might need to put a coat of clear gesso on it. It's up to you though. Um, I do find that the paper will soak up the paint pretty fast. So if you have any questions, just put it in. Yeah, Peru. I thought it, it was interesting. Okay, let's where the and his neck there there's his ear and his neck is here I'm just gonna wisp it down so it's got a little bit of furriness to it and nose There's the top of his head there. Um, I think I'll do his antlers too. The same color. Just looking for the outline. Very faint. I'm going to get a smaller brush to do that. Maybe, let's see. Okay, I've got a little bit of a angled brush here. It's a number, it's a quarter inch. Hey, Barbara. So what are you guys been doing? Are you doing the December daily or you got something else going on? I know there's a lot of hops going to be starting. Mary 
at the Mary LTA has got quite a few on the go. I don't know how she does it. <laughs> I can barely keep my, what I do straight. <laughs> I don't know how she does that. On there and all reindeers have different antlers so if you get it wrong don't worry about it <laughs> they all have different antlers no two are alike but don't stress got some light areas just give it another coat don't worry too much about it because we'll be going back on top of this again but try and get you know if you see some really bright areas like this white here I'm just gonna throw a little bit on there his nose here there. Hey, Lita. Oh, no, Lita. Oh, yeah, you could use a reindeer. darker there. Missed a spot. All right, there's our reindeer base coated. Now oh, there's a downloadable for you there, Lena, if you want to. It's in the description if you want to join in and or do it later. Uh, I think we're going to give the reindeer a red jingle bells. So we're going to get some red here. Um, I want it fairly red, so I'm going to give it a base coat of that umber, or not umber, um, buff color, just so that I can get a good coat of red because red tends to be a little bit on the transparent side so it's hard to get a really good looking red right off the bat so just give it a coat first and then you can go back over it with red and it'll go on a lot nicer reindeer today. There's a traceable in the link below if you want to play along. Okay, I'm going to have to dry this. You want to make sure it's good and dry.
All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go back in and put in my areas, but I'm going to use, you can either use the existing pattern and use a white transfer, or you can just try and do it um, without using the, the pattern. Um, I know I have one somewhere. Uh, and I gotta find my transfer paper. The new one. Went is this Pharrell White? It comes in a big roll, so it's it. This will last you forever, <laughs> depending on how many you do. But I don't use a lot of it, but it comes in handy. You can get it in gray, blue, yellow, red, all kinds of colors. The only thing they don't, didn't put a tear thing on it, which is kind of dumb. All right. So I can take that one off. And put, let's see if this came down properly. Hopefully it did. Checking. Let's see if it's properly down. Just a tad. Let's see if his nose is in the right spot. Chin. Yep, I think that's good. We'll see. I'm just going to put where his eye is. His mouth. And nostrils, little cheek, maybe his ears now. Where's antlers start? Um, and his legs. And his tail. Uh, I'm just going to put that there so I know where I think that's all I need. Yep, works good. All right. Now what we're going to do or what I'm going to do is you want to do highlights and low lights. So they have a really mixed looking fur. Um, let's see, what can I use? Just thinking. And it's fairly coarse looking, but I'm not going to go for you know, really, really detailed fur in this one. I just want it to show the areas basically of, of the tone. 
So I think I'm just going to put in, see, I'm thinking this is how I work. <laughs> how am I going to do this? You're seeing the real thinking <laughs> of what I do. I still have some of that I got years ago when I had to do the flipping oil painting. <laughs> well, now you can use it for this. You can use it on your, um, on fabric too. If you need to do any of that. So I think this is fairly dark, but let's see. I think I'm going to put a little bit darker areas and see how this goes in here. That would be a muscle shaded area. I have a picture on my um, screen that I'm, I'm looking at of their uh, different textures and uh, different coloring they're all different though so don't get too worked up about oh it's not exactly the way i've got it because everyone is different so i'm just gonna go along here this tails the tails are even different so this one that I'm looking at has a dark section kind of um, hairy around the outer edge of his tail and then it gets lighter as you go in then his leg would have some shadow so I'm just gonna you want me to go in a little bit so you see what I'm doing? Oop, about there. And then just The inside of his leg would be a little darker and right in here this is where the other one shows and then his neck would be darker just where you see the This is going to be something very quick. You can do as much detail as you want. His cheek would be a little darker. And down his nose. I'm just putting in kind of the base of the colors formations that I'm seeing. I'm not getting really detailed as far as the um, hairs, each hair and that type of thing. But you're not going to see that a lot in this. I might have a little bit around his eye there. Yep, exactly. <laughs> Real time hamster wheel thinking here. And if any of this doesn't look right, you can paint over it. His nose is going to be fairly dark. I might have to use a smaller brush for that. Okay, I've got a really small one here. This is um, a number four flat. And I want some black, I think. A little bit of black. I'm 
his nose, and the inside of his nose would be really black. And his mouth. Just to make it a little easier, I think I'm just going to do the nose black for you. So you don't have to worry about too much detail. And then just underneath, there'd be a little bit of shadow in there. And his eye, you can do black. And we'll put highlights in later. He has a little tear duct that points down. And then his other eye was about here, I believe. And a little bit darker around the outer edge here. I'm just going to make a bunch of little marks. So it looks a little more fluffy on his ears. And right here, kind of dry brush it. under his eye a little bit and right here and mix a little bit of that black with the brown the raw umber I'm going to use that for the shading of the antlers Cass, how do you figure out the size of the main image when the background is already being done? His size is great to get. Um, well, I already had this, the background painted. Um, being that it's the main focal, that you're going to be putting on. I knew that it would be the, he, because of his size, he would be up front. So in perspective, he would be the largest thing on the page. Is that what you mean? So if you wanted, if, if you wanted to make this guy um in the tree somewhere in the background you would make him a whole lot smaller associated with the size of the trees that you're going to put him beside see because he's so big he looks like he's in front of the trees because the trees are behind him but if you wanted him to be standing beside the trees or just in front of the trees then you would shrink him down and his feet would be up here instead. Really the size of him in the front. So, do I have another one here? 
like this one here. I could size him down if I wanted him. I could size him down so that he just fits in this area right here. Little one. Do you have to make different sizes to get the right size? Yeah, you do. If you want, if you want, um, you can't use that same size and put them here because he would look too odd. Um, that he would look like he was gigantic because of the size of the tree. So if he was to, if he was um, up in here <laughs> or behind the, this tree, he, he would be too big. You gotta, you gotta remember what is in the background already. So when you're doing, it has to be the right proportion of what you already have on your your background so I couldn't put him back here because he would be gigantic because this is a full-grown tree he would be a mon yeah exactly he would be a monster <laughs> so you just have to look at your um, perspective as far as proportions what what's already there if you if you want to put him back there and you haven't got anything in the background then you can do whatever you want but if you're going to put anything in front of him it has to be bigger yet again so if i wanted to say he was peeking from behind a bush or a tree the tree and bush right here would have to be a lot more bigger and more detailed Yeah, exactly, Janet. You do learn it's by mistakes, too. You learn all this stuff. I would make one that enlarge or shrink on the printer. Yeah, that's all you have to do. If you want, if you want it to set back and just shrink it down in your computer or your printer. A really good way of, of understanding perspective as far as proportions related to each other in a, in a scene is cut out a bunch of figures or animals and try to place them in a magazine or a picture photograph and see what it looks like. That will tell you whether it has the right proportion with everything around it. It's a really good way of learning proportion. Oh, I just messed that. To give that a little. I'm just going to make some marks here for his feet he would have a little bit of shadowing along here too this is just his coat color I'm just going to make some shaggy marks. So I have quite a bit of fur, like a collar fur. And then I have to finish the, the a little bit of shading here for his horn. Yeah. 
and right in here is shaded. I'm going to bring it down and that gets shaded. And then here. If you don't want to use a brush too. You can always use a Posca or a paint marker of some sort. Moose are huge. I love to see a moose in person. Yes, they are huge and they're very dangerous. They may not look dangerous, but they are. They will charge you no time flat. And you wouldn't think with the rack they have, that they could run so fast through the brush, but they do. And when they are mad at you, and you go up a tree to get safe, they will sit there or stand there for days if they have to. Yeah, they're grumps, especially if they're being shot at. <laughs> Poor guys. And I'm going to put a little bit of black in the tail now, just, just around the very kind of furry looking just at the bottom and around the edge, just to give it a little bit more dimension. So you don't, the more, more layers you get, the more colors, the more um, variation of a color in, in the fur, the better it looks, so. Okay, I think he needs a little bit in his head too, right up here, around the antler. And down here, his ear, a little bit of black in the center. You just keep playing with it until you like it, basically. Now, this here needs, I think, a little bit of dark, just to show where that curves into his stomach. Again, you're, you're thinking muscles and 
that type of thing. Okay, now I'm going to add a little bit of this buff color with that brown, lighten it up a little bit. And now I'm going to start adding kind of parts of, of the highlights. So he's got a little, that's kind of watery, a little bit more in his tail. It's kind of I think I might use my ridge brush again. A little easier. So this brush. And you just have it going into that dark area too. It looks a little fluffy. This is a layering process. You just have to keep adding. You might add too much white. Then you can add some more black. And you add more white again. It's just back and forth until you get it the way you want. Then... And I got a furry back too, a little bit. And then this is a little bit lighter up here. Down here. So when I'm done this, I'll, I'll um, add another link so you can use it as a reference if you want, if that's what you'd like. So, you know, it's easier to view something that's already done than do it just <laughs> off the bat, not know where you're going to put all the highlights and stuff. So. down his nose a little bit and up there and then right in here a little bit In the winter, they're, they are quite fluffy. They got a pretty good coat on them. A little more white here for buff. I'm just going to outline where his side changes color here from the shadow of the way he's turning. And then a little bit more along his leg here, too. So. Not up enough, sorry. And right above his eye. 
he has a light spot. And then his antlers have lighter areas too. So around the one side, so the opposite side, you put the shadows on, you put the highlights on the opposite side. And they're kind of rough, too. Um, well, depends on the year, though, or not the year, the season. I think they're they're more, they got the felt or velvet, I guess they call it, on them in the winter. here. I could tell you all kinds of stuff about wild game. My ex was a hunter. Didn't like that. I just don't see the point in doing it if you have meat in the stores. <laughs> Leave the animals alone. All right, now I'm going to do some... They have a bit of white on their tails. In certain areas, really kind of a grayish white, though. So you want to take some white with a little bit of black, make a really light gray. And now I'm going to, it's kind of just a little more water on my brush. So it's, they, it's just kind of, hairs around the outside edge into that black and the sides of their legs too the insides of their legs can be have a little bit of white so you have to remember which way their fur is going to for it to look natural Can you see what I'm doing? Um, and then it just goes up to about here. And then you can put a little bit on here. Just a smidge. 
and in here it's just to highlight it's dry brushing i'm not really putting a very thick coat on here it's very very light it's more dry brushing than anything else and i'm trying to remember how the fur would be going and around here and his front leg too and then just a few in the neck part you want some of that real white but you want it you don't want a really thick line you kind of want to dry brush it too so take some of that color off of your brush so it's more of a dry brushing and his ear has a lot it's a little thicker fuzzy and it can go out towards the darker areas of the edges of the ear So give this a try. I hope you will, because it's not, you, you'll never learn unless you try. And if you have to do it a few times, do it. Each time you do it, you'll get better at it. Don't expect to do something the first time and have it look like mine, because it won't. You have to work at it that's why i do mine in journals if you want to have it as something on a canvas then there's no way you would do this right off the bat And it's all about the shadows and the highlights that make it come alive. So sometimes you'll have to really struggle through the ugly parts because there are a lot of ugly parts when painting because there's no detail in it. So it just doesn't look like the greatest. I think this needs to be a little lighter. So I'm just going to put some lighter areas in here where his muscles would be in his leg. Up into here. And here. Here needs a little bit more white. And it's just dry brushing. Makes it look furry. And I think I'm gonna make the snout more white they do have this more of a white look in their snout and it's furry so 
and they have white around their eyes. Although there are different types of reindeer. So I'm just going to make his snout a little more white. So it wouldn't be as um, defined as far as hairs. They would be shorter hairs, so you're not going to get a long looking line for, for around his snout. Um, leave the nostril. The nostrils will be black, but not... It was fun, really funny looking because you would have thought that their nose would be like a dog or like a cow where there's no fur on it, but yeah, apparently not. I guess it's so cold they need uh, their nose to be warm. They got nose warmers. <laughs> and then his little chin would have that too. A little more in his neck here. Okay. Now I'm going to get the real white without the gray in it. Put a little more on the snout. Highlight it. And around his eye. We need to name them. <laughs> I'll put his muzzle in in a minute. So I lost his. This needs to be a little whiter. I think I need a little bit more black on the tip.
And right here, I think. See a bit of a shadow there. And uh, what would a reindeer do if he lost his tail? Go to the retail <laughs> shop. <laughs> oh, Eileen. <laughs> You're funny. <laughs> All right. I think I need a little more in here. In there. Putting a little bit of highlight on his, more on his nose here. And you would have highlight. Bit of a gray highlight first. And then now we have to do the red on his collar here. And we'll have, I don't know, gold or silver bells. Or should they be black? I don't know. Silver maybe? You can get a reindeer name. <laughs> All right, let's see what I think we need to get. Dry that first and then we'll put some circles on there for the bells. here somewhere. Hmm. Let's do silver. I'm just going to use a paint marker. So let's see. So we had one here. 
so I'm just gonna put circles in. Putting in more than I had. One more. And that was for there. And I'm just going to color them in. The paint marker. And then we'll just use some darker gray to give it a bit of shading and some highlight. If you have gold, you can do gold. You can do whatever color you want. Okay. And dry it. Now we want to shade some of this, so I'm going to take my that small one go. I'm going to take this small brush here that's flat, and I'm going to mix a little bit of that red and black together, just a bit of black with the red, to make a darker color. And then underneath these bells, I want to just add a bit of a curve under the bell. Just on the one side, though. If you go over it, you can always use the marker again. And, and then in the inside of this, where it loops around, that'll be darker too. Might want a little bit darker than that. So it's more noticeable. Okay, and then dry that. Yeah, I'm just going to go back and retrace some of these. Just so that they're the better shape. There. Now you can take a black marker, fine tip, probably. Um, this one works. And you want to put the shape of the the opening in the bell jingle bell so it's 
All you have to do is like a slight curve and then a dot on the ends of those lines that you put in. So it kind of looks like that. And then there. Actually, I think I'm going to and I'm going to put a dark line along the edge of that red strip. Just on the sides though, not on the top and bottom. All right. Make sure that's good and dry and then we'll shade the bells. I think the easiest way to shade the bells would be get to get um, a very very small liner, probably a one or a zero would be the best. Do I have any here? Um, I think I can just. Oh, that one might work. Let's see. No, that's too. Well, it might work. And I want to get that black, but I want it watered down. So water on a script liner, really water it down. So you're just going to have more of a glaze than anything else. And you want a good point. And then you're just going to go around the bottom. Now this is hard to do. And shade the, the bottom area of those bells. You could use a Faber-Castell pit pen in, in um, gray. And do the same thing. Might be a little easier if you have them. And this one's going to be dark because it's right underneath. So we're just going to make that all dark. Make sure it's dark enough. See it? Then we're going to highlight. And with the highlights, we can use a pen. So if you got a white jelly roll or a Posca, whatever you've got. And with the jelly roll, I find the, the best way to use it is light touch. The more you press down, the less you'll get. So we just want to put some white areas on the top. 
I don't know if this is going to go showing up. I might have to use paint. Ah, I'm going to use paint. I'm going to use paint pen instead. I just want a little bit though. This one's working good. Mm, that one's not really working. I need a better pen. Let's see. better and then you just highlight the very top it will be the brightest I don't know if it, you'll see the difference or not Um, yeah, that's, and then put the, um, highlight in the, in the eye. So just a dab. Uh, you won't really see it in here, but I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna add one there. If you want to add more highlights in the antlers, you can put more in. You can go nuts in highlights. Don't put too much in because then it kind of gets, you can ruin it if you put too much in. Now, this would probably be a leather um, band, so you can also put a highlight on the leather if you want. I'm going to just see what it looks like. I got just a bit. And it might have hmm, just a bit of highlight in between here and there, maybe down the side a little bit. I'm going to put his uh, nostril in. They have fairly big nostrils. And his little mouth. Um, I might put a few hairs in there where it's darker. Here. All right. What else? Maybe a few white marks in the center of his tail. Might have a few. Okay, so I in my background I already had that it was snowing, so we're gonna have to put more snow on top of this now. <laughs> so I want to get a fairly stiff bristle brush. Here's one here, and you want to get it good and wet. So get some pure white. Put a lot of water in it.
and then just with your finger throw some on if you want bigger ones you can there or just put a, a dab here and there bigger ones and then dry it. I'm looking at it and I think that this one leg here has to come out. I don't I don't like the way it's positioned. So let's see, we can make some of that up again. I think I'm going to bring it out just a smidge. That's better. All right, see? Just a smidge better. All right, I think he's done. You, you could get really detailed, but I'm not going to do that. Um, depends how much, you know, how much you want to put into it. Let's see. Up here. That's the stomach. I think where it goes up here, it needs to. There. right in here needs to be a little highlighted more actually that needs to go out more there And what else? I think I, I think he's done. Thanks, guys. So you just experiment. See what you can uh, work. <laughs> but that was just on a old background that I already had. So use some scrapbook paper or whatever you want to make it work for you. If you don't want to do a background, you can use the background. There's all kinds of backgrounds that are already done for you that have the snow scene in the um, scrapbook paper lines, like the Christmas lines. 
Yeah, I think he turned out pretty cool. Um, what else? Well, I did get, uh, <laughs> another paint that I'm going to test to see what it's like. The, and this one is, uh, Magic Fly, it's called. Thanks, everybody. So this will be interesting to see what these are, how well they they are, whether they're uh, like a craft paint or whether they're um, I did see that, um, what's, Arteza is now uh, got paint in Canada because they weren't in Canada for the longest time. So it's a two fluid ounces, so same as you would get for Your craft paint. Let's see, wow, they're really full. Oh, they're nice, very nice. That is like right up to the brim <laughs> they seem to be really really nice and like for a red that's pretty good to cover that up because usually red is very um transparent this is the 20 set i don't know how many you can get but they've got a good selection of different colors there's some neons i found uh, let's see what the neons like because i find the neons are usually really transparent and i'll show you a book that i have oh look at how cool they are wow oh there we go oops okay let's see they're 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 not bad the neon it's nice and bright so we'll see how they well it looks like they they dry really matte well that's a plus that's what i like awesome very matte that's perfect here get that back out and I'll show you And they're nice and thick. So that's good. Yeah, look at that. That's the red. It's, I wouldn't call that red, though. But nice and uh, opaque. Very matte. See that? There's no shine on it at all. That is 
awesome. And it's, it, it doesn't feel like rough or anything, but it's, I thought I saw something about Arteza matte paints recently. Oh, Arteza has a matte paint also. These are really cheap too. These were a really good price for what you got. You can also get them individual so you don't have to buy the whole set. That's what I look for because I don't want to have to buy a whole set if you're only using certain colors mostly. Let's see. Um, now for a craft paint, here's just the Americana. Let's do a little comparison here. See, it's a lot more translucent. It's not as opaque. Okay, let's dry that and see if there's difference in shine. Yeah, it's the same. It's the same as uh, your craft paint. So very, very. Matter of fact, this is feels smoother. This one feels smoother than this one. The brand is called Magic Fly. Let me try the other one. I got that other one too. Um, where did they put it? This one is like we'll do a red crimson brilliant red. We'll do brilliant red. This one's a uh, make. The dab like we did. Transparency is about the same as that. That one has a little bit of a sheen to it. Not much, but a little bit. I don't know if you can see that. See, there's just a slight bit of a sheen, whereas this one, there's nothing. This is smooth. About the same smoothness, these two. So, yeah, that's like that sheen, it wouldn't hinder as far as um, drawing on it. Let's see. Uh, magic marker, pencil. I got a white pen in here. Get a colored pencil. Let's see. Let's 
let's see, white touch. Dark, light touch. See that, ah, interesting. And this is the craft paint. This one is better if you're going to use colored pencil. See the difference? So this one's really great. That's the magic fly paint. Yeah, it looks like it looks like Arteza, doesn't it? Maybe it is, and they're just under a different name for Canada. I don't know. But it does have a really nice matte finish, that's for sure. So I'm glad I, I'm glad I got both of those because I really like those Magic Fly, and they're thick. Um, the other thing I was going to show you is that book. Where did I put it? This is what, when I, when I did a embroidery and fiber art, this is what I did. Freeform embroidery. This is an older book, but. Um, you make actual scenes or um, pictures. So you make trees and that type of thing. This is what I love. This is the type of embroidery that I like to do in fiber art. This is a good book if you like um, scenery and that type of thing. Use, using um, tool also to overlap your your stuff so you can do different scenes. That's what I like. Like, look at that. That's so cool. And there's tool over top of that that gives it dimension. I took a few courses in this. It was fun. But again, that's getting into a bunch of fabric again. <laughs> and I, don't, I don't know if I want to go down that road. That very expensive, <laughs> addictive road of collecting fabric. It's almost like stained glass where you have to have so many different textures, color combinations <laughs> to um, simulate grass or mountains or rock or a sea or whatever. You have to have those because you can't just have a, a very limited selection in order to do a scene. You have to go out and find stuff. It can get very expensive. Very, very good book, though. If you want. If you want to go down this road. Yes, she is. Very good artist. All right. Um, what else was I going to show you? So that was our today. Um, oh, this is what will be done on the 26th on Mary's, um, what's it called? Fourth Saturday. 
hop, I think it's called, or four Saturday video hop. So that's what I did, and it's a little video for you to watch. And that's um, what we've done so far. And then I'm going to be doing, uh, putting the all these folders together. <laughs> Doodle stitch art. Oh, there's there is so many different ones out there. There's tons. But what I want to do with it is like this here. This is a little sample. This pretty, um, see how shiny it is. That's tool that I used. And I glued it onto the substrate. But you can't see where it ended. And that's kind of the thing I want to do is embroidery on tool and then you can use it in your projects. So this is what it was. And then I just glued it on. So this is what you can use for um, putting down a bunch of loose fabrics so they don't come up. You, you kind of put them on with a bit of stitching, but not totally laid down. And then you can use tool like this and you, you um, sew it down onto the, the whole thing and just kind of uh, embroider on, on top of this. It's, it's a really neat way of doing art. So I want to incorporate some of that into next year's final folder stuff. And I got this at the dollar store a couple years ago. It came by the roll. <laughs> Here. Big roll of it. So that's what we're going to be adding to our stuff. So I think that's it for me today. So if you get a chance, download that uh, file and give this some um, guy a try. You can put them on whatever you want. If you already have a scene you can put them on you can do that you can make them larger bigger whatever and uh, see what you can do with it you can take this off the bells if you want you don't have to leave them on you could add bells hanging off of his antlers you could do whatever you want to this guy but it's it's a the drawing is just a very simple start of there's no real detail on it it's just showing you where the basics are on the subject so give it a try and if you do um tag me on instagram or um facebook wherever and if i do have an instagram um paint along i think it's paint along with with kathy arbor i believe Hashtag, and you can put it up on there. So I'll let you guys go, and I want you to all to have a fantastic creative day, and we'll see you next week. Um, also, the member stream for Blooming Artist, I probably won't be having a live stream but I will be putting up a video for you uh, because that's Christmas Day I believe that is scheduled for <laughs> so you guys are going to be busy so but I will put a, up a video on Christmas Day for you to watch if you so wish 
So until then, we'll see you around the um, internet somewhere. And I want you to all have a very Merry Christmas if I don't see you then. And we'll talk to you in the new year or on New Year's Eve on the stream. <laughs> all right. Have a great one, everyone. Bye for now.